This is a Waterkeeper investigation. I'm Mark Matson, President of Swim Drink Fish Canada and the Lake Ontario Waterkeeper. Today's topic is about microplastics, the emerging threat to the fish and the drinking water of the Great Lakes. I hope you enjoy it. Plastic is a huge problem. We usually find a lot of plastic washed ashore, a lot of bottle caps and straws and tampon applicators and um, just little bits and pieces that have broken off bigger plastic things. When we started out studying plastics in the Great Lakes, we were mainly focusing on larger items, which is what most people see. A lot of what I see right here when I look out is takeout containers and water bottles and throwaway items that um, we don't necessarily need or we could make them out of more sustainable, safer plastic materials. So when we look in water in the lakes but also in sediment, we find plastics of just about every type that we use. Uh, we find that they're more abundant in waters that are near urban areas. Right now we're sampling with Lake Ontario Waterkeeper uh, with a manta net. This is a trawl uh, that will filter out any plastics that are larger than 330 microns, capture any floating pieces of plastic that are in the surface water. Got some goodies. This is going to be gross. Once there are microplastics in the water, it never really disappears. The, the microfibers are very difficult. The, they're very difficult to clean up. This company does recognize that the, that fleece, I mean, which is our core product, I mean, we've been making it for years, we do recognize at this point that it is, it is very harmful to the environment. The impact of, of washing your fleeces, how much microfibers were shed during the wash, uh, where they end up, Going forward, uh, there's a lot more research to be done. Uh, this is just the just the tip of it. There's many many problems with uh, with the garment industry in terms of in terms of pollution. I mean, it's it's a pretty dirty business. It, it comes down to us uh, trying to find a solution, trying to move forward with it, and really leading by example. We're finding that there's a number of different sources that uh, include microbeads from personal care products. Obviously, fragments are broken down particles from larger plastic products. Most of these, you can't identify what the original product is. They just are broken down items. There's a lot of plastic that comes from single-use plastics, like, uh, plastic cutlery, things that are used once and thrown away. And it makes its way into a waterway either through a man-made water course or through a natural wa water course like a river or a stream and makes its way out into the lakes. 
And once it's exposed to UV radiation, then that's what actually breaks it down, makes it very fragile. And then once it lands along the shorelines, it can move with wind or water and it becomes abraded and it tends to break down into even smaller pieces. Companies that will melt them down and use them to uh, make molds of different types of plastic products like something like this lid for example. There tend to be spills when they're offloaded especially from rail cars and if you have a storm event, some rain, it's going to push those pallets into storm drains and eventually they'll end up in the lake as well. Okay, there are some pieces of styrofoam. Floating plastics could be ingested by insects or fish. Small plastic particles might enter our drinking systems. So myself, my expertise is in ecotoxicology. So I, I studied, I care more, I don't care more about, I do, I care more about the wildlife. So I've asked more questions in terms of how is it impacting wild populations and nature. But what governments and policymakers really want to know is how does it impact humans. Plastics, uh, persistent organic pollutants can adsorb to the surfaces of plastics and if a fish, for example, eats a pellet that has persistent organic pollutants on it, there's the chance that th those pollutants will travel up the food chain. We know that plastic is present in organisms in the Great Lakes and in their gut. So litter from the streets can blow straight into the lakes or it can wash off of the streets um, into the lakes via rain when it goes into the river and down the river. Plastic could have the potential of ending up in our drinking water and could have negative impacts on human health. A lot of what gets flushed down the toilet can end up in the lake. Wastewater treatment plants are another source. We wash our clothing, some of those fibers come off in the washing machine, they go off, they go out with the water in the back, they go to the wastewater treatment system, some of them end up in the lake. The way that I have described this to people is what if your washing machine was leaking all over your basement floor? What are you going to do first? Turn off the water or start sweeping it into the drain? You're going to turn off the water first and you're going to start sweeping it in the drain. So we need both. We need cleanup and we need, we need uh, source reduction at the same time. Of course, picking up trash is everybody, and there are a lot of people who feel strongly about doing that and that's always helpful, but it doesn't change the amount of plastic that's out there. What it does is just displace it. We pick up the plastic and then we move it somewhere else. Uh, if it's recyclable, then that's great. Then it can be remade into something else. But most of the plastics that are created are not recyclable, unfortunately. Do you want to come to a, a, a lake that's covered in plastic and plastic floating beside you all the time and sitting on the patio, or do you want it to be clean water? Just don't go to the grocery store without your cloth bags. It's as simple as that. Don't buy plastic water bottles. There's no point in doing that. When you see plastic on, on a sidewalk or uh, on a beach, pick it up, because if we don't pick it up, it'll end up in our water.
Thanks for watching this important film. If you want to learn more about the topic or more about Waterkeeper, go to waterkeeper.ca. Thank you again and hope to see you out on the water.